Afternoon guys, James here at Sunseeker Southampton. Uh, I'm down in our pool shipyard this afternoon, just carrying out a couple of quick video tours. And whilst I'm here, uh, fresh in as our used PX stock, we have a Sunseeker Portofino 40. Uh, 2013 boat, she's called Skyfall. Uh, hasn't been prepared yet, so you have to excuse a little bit of winter grime on the exterior surfaces. But honestly, the boat isn't gonna be around for long and by the time she's fully prepped uh, for sale, to be honest, she's going to be sold. So I thought it was a great opportunity to get a quick look round. Uh, she's got the Ken Freevok upgrade wood interior, the standard Volvo D6 330 engines, two owners from new, um, originally supplied to the UK, owner then took her out to Greece uh, when she was then brought back to the UK and she's been based on the Hamble River since. Um, and we're just about to um, prep her for sale. So here she is. Standard boat's finished in white gel coat. This one with the factory upgrade. So it's a black gel coat hole band there from rubbing straight down. Uh, as part of our dealer prep, normally we would go through the boat, checking the systems, uh, carry out fresh coat anti-foul servicing engines, drives and what have you. So boat's literally just been surveyed today. So we can check her off and we've got then a starting list to get a ship shape ready for the next owner. But having had a quick look round, it's a little bit of salt on the hull, but generally pretty good. These look really nice with the black hull, blends in nicely with the, the big glass windows that are up here in the hull band. Say so with some, um, with a fresh coat of polish and, and a fresh coat of anti-foul from the outside. Certainly she'll look like a new boat. Uh, we've got a bow thruster in the front there, electric side power unit, galvanized anchor, up forward and just walking down the starboard side here again so very very clean hard um, hard in the light here just to to pick up the shine but there's still plenty of um, plenty of luster in the gel coat so it's going to come up really nicely this one uh, a couple of little points to note decor wise so these are a wrapped carbon fiber on the uh, the engine vents and then we also did a wrap on the the mullion there, so that was a factory standard finish on the 40 Portofinos. She's got the optional hydraulic high-low bathing platform mechanism on the back here, so that's a, a 300 kilo lift. I will just about take a Williams 285 jet tender if you wish. Uh, there's a small tender on the back here which the owner is going to, to take off prior to handover to us. So we're on Volvo Stern drives. Uh, you'll notice there isn't a tie bar here between the drives as she's got the optional joystick system and we've actually got a stern thruster fitted on here as well. So absolutely from a maneuvering point of view, complete overkill for a boat of this size, making berthing an absolute doddle. Nice to have. Would have been a high spec this. We're probably looking at about 420,000 pounds new back in 2013. Uh, we've got the Teak platform here so you just have to excuse the winter grime so it will all clean off very nicely um, obviously having been out to Greece it's a full med spec so we've got the center mount passerelle here which will have a remote control uh, there's reverse cycle air conditioning we've got an ice maker full navigation package really there's nothing to add to this boat if you want something to use either in the UK climate or down in the warmer Mediterranean sunshine she is a very very good option so we come inside here into the cockpit big seating area here on the starboard side finished in the silver tex platinum color here which is a gray uh, with a piping detail behind here this is a, a sun pad area and then the this backrest cushion actually folds all the way down flat to give you a nice sunbed in the aft end of the cockpit here uh, looks like these covers have had some some retrofit these are roll down covers for privacy so we've got some velcro running around the windows and they'll either to keep the keep the light out if you wanted to sleep out here overnight or just privacy when the boat's on the mooring adjustable height teak table here so not having been cleaned down yet presents nicely over on the opposite side we've got the corner wet bar unit so it's a top loading cool box, handy just so that it doesn't empty the context of your, your fridge on the floor if you've been at sea. Uh, one of the few things missing, this was an option for an electric 
griddle in here, easy to retrofit if you wish. It'll work off the generator or the shore power. Sink in the corner. And then we've got a storage cupboard. Uh, and this is the ice maker over here. You'll notice the little panel behind there. So this is the passerelle control, the bathing platform control, and then this is the battery switches. Just turn off the alarm from the nav kit. Reminding me I've got the batteries turned on. So a nice feature on the 40 Portofinos was the four forward facing seats. So over on the starboard side here at the helm, we've got room for both the helm and a co-pilot. And then on the port side of the boat, this raised seating area, which gives a great viz out through the windscreen, a little bit hazy today with the, the damp, just as the, the dusk settles in. If I just sit here, spin the camera around, you can see it's a, it's a nice raised area where you can see round behind me here. I've got the side window to look out of. If you imagine yourself sitting here chatting to people in the cockpit here, it's a very nice social space. Got nice things like the handrail here to grab hold of whilst you're moving. You've got this nice upright panel here where you can put your feet for stability if it's, um, if it's not such a nice day on the water. These run really nicely up to about 36 knots with the standard 330 engines. Uh, cruising speed around 24 knots burns 60, 65 litres an hour. So it's an efficient hull, covering ground very well. Uh, it does about 250 nautical miles on the tank. So if we come across opposite here, we're now at the, uh, the helm. So further upgrades here, uh, the carbon fibre dash panels, we try and come in and show the weave on here. And then this is Volvo's seven inch color display. Just power that up. Check out what we've got in the way of engine hours. Reading just 225 hours on the engine. So very, very little usage. You say it sat outside initially the, um, the first owner's house on a Greek island. And then say latterly down on the Hamble River. So Volvo's EVC fly-by-wire throttles, so obviously manoeuvring wise, very straightforward, one finger in and out of gear. And then back into neutral, activate the docking system here on the joystick. And then this is very intuitive, so push it sideways, you can twist the top at the same time. That will give you both lateral movement sideways and adjusting the pitch of the boat at the same time. And then we've got, say that uh, benefit of the stern thruster as well, means that you can push the whole control over sideways to engage both bow and stern, twist the top and you get usage of both thrusters in counteracting directions. Uh, this is our autopilot control here. And then we've got uh, multi-function SIMRAD displays here that will do speed and depth. We've got a large 12 inch chart plotter. So if I just drop the brightness down on this, it should be a bit easier to see on the screen. Uh, so this is linked into, we've got a halo radar up on the the roof above us um, and it's um, it's got the option to add AIS into it as well if you so wish. Tilt steering wheel and it's got the latter upgraded Sunseeker weighted badge in the middle there so nice little attention to detail. It's a great helm these so you can see behind is where I've been stood the seat cushion also drops down to give you a, a seat or a stand-up bolster and then we've got this little drop down teak step here so it just gives sort of an extra three inches of height for those that maybe want to stick their head out over the top of the roof um, as obviously the section here above us retracts back into the aft arch area there to give you sort of wind in the hair when you want a bit of sun etc and then it's uh it's very quick to shut one finger and it gives you then a water resistant cockpit area here you can see no no gaps we've got some nice big drains down both sides and that big solid GRP section on the front which just stops the whole thing flapping around when you're manoeuvring underway. So let's head on down and check out what a Ken Freevok interior looks like. So Ken Freevok, very well known super yacht designer, worked on a lot of big yacht projects over the years and a number of collaborations with Sunseeker. So this was a, a Venge with a figured an egg grey wood that we did. And it works really nicely. Um, upgrade in the saloon here, so we've got the full wood floor. So the galley area here was standard and then you've got the upgrade throughout. Just to make it a bit more practical for those that want to be in and out in shoes. Or even with bare feet just to keep the, uh, 
the carpet's clean. Uh, you'll see some little recesses in the floor there. That's for um, table is a drop down with a fill in cushion there. So that will make a third double bed if you need it for occasional six berths on board. We've got these lovely big hole windows now you can see from the inside, both a mixture of fixed panes and also that opening port light up forward. Lots of storage up here, high level. Uh, we've got aircon handler units underneath the, the seats here. Over in the corner, there's a couple of bookshelves. Uh, we're on UK three pin sockets, easy enough to change those to med style two pin sockets. And then the main distribution panel, so a mixture of the 12 volt and 230 volt domestics and Sunseeker's CM8 monitoring system here. So we've got things like the shore power, uh, generator control, tankage and what have you. Um, Fusion AV system, so we've got a, an iPod dock, which will take an iPod or, a, or an earlier generation iPhone. We've got speakers both inside and outside big skylights up in the ceiling here above us, letting a lot of natural light in, even on this sort of dim, murky evening. Of course, nice uh, LED lights as well, so minimum power consumption and maximum brightness. Opposite, we've got a, what looks like about a 32 inch Samsung TV, uh, which will be linked into that Fusion as a DVD player. And then accommodation is split into two separate cabins, uh, sharing the same heads compartment, so we start here in the forward master cabin. We've got an island double bed. There was a couple of different finishes on the, the fabrics here on the, the knee rolls and on top on these lift up sort of vanity stations. Uh, so this is a, a very contemporary black leather. There were some quite funky oranges and, and aqua colors also offered. Uh, so again, storage high level. We've got these nice little inlaid Silver strip, again little feature LEDs up forward with an emergency escape hatch there. And then again the bonded windows with the nice big port light. And you see by the bed there air conditioning panels. So we're full reverse cycle aircon. Also do your heating when needed. And then we've got a full length wardrobe here, port side. There's a, a safe, digital safe down there in the bottom. And again on this side. mirror image, a couple of drawers in the bottom, so handy, sort of his and hers wardrobes. Uh, and then the bathroom here, so this is Jack and Jill star, so we've got two doors in, one direct here from the master cabin, where again we've got the wood floor upgrade, separate shower stall, and then we've got storage up top here. In the cupboards, you see a tiny little bit of delamination on the bottom of the mirrors here. We could change those if, if you so wish. Um, looking around port lights and stuff, these all look pretty good. No real evidence of, of damage. No nasty dents in the floor that I can see. So once the boat's fully prepped, obviously any little bits will be taken care of. And then we come back aft, and this is the midship's guest cabin. Now we did actually find a number of owners using this as a master cabin. If you haven't got guests on board and don't want the ensuite access, you've got these two pretty substantial single beds that run transverse across the boat. And the forward bed here can actually slide aft, which then gives you, come in here and try and shirt from a better angle, what is then actually a really big double bed in here. And you've got big hull windows, both sides of the cabin down there, you can see a big opening port light. And there's a continuation of the bedside table here, which runs under the bed so that it can be used then say as a, an offset double. And this particular owner is elected to have a third mattress put in here on top of the sideboard on the port side of the boat. So we've got storage cupboards here below. Further storage, so just try and stand back so you can see the third bed. It's not quite a full adult length in there, but it's a good sort of five foot six length. Great for kids. And then we've got another wardrobe, some storage drawers, etc. So it presents really nicely down here. 
see minimal very very little use from a I would say from cooking and, and staying on board it looks like it's really just been used as a day boat everything's very very clean we've got a few scratches on the worktop here and um, this is a synthetic stone finish so actually we can wet sand that and probably improve to a point looks like we've still got original cutlery in there uh, should be a storage bin yep so that's still still present and then up above here there's a microwave oven and a set of the original Royal Dalton crockery and let's see what we've got still in the way of glasses so it looks like we've got pretty much a full complement of glasses in there as well so last but no means least of course we check out the exterior decks and we'll also just have a quick look in the engine bay here so it's on an electric just to come back to the access locker here so we've got a big center ram which lifts this whole back seat arrangement up there's a massive storage locker under the back here it will take a, a life raft or if you've got a small blow up dinghy paddle board etc and then behind in the aft sunbed as well that's got further lockers that will take your ropes and fenders so we won't quite take that all the way up if we just have a look down round in here, so we say on stern drive configuration, so engines right at the back. And then over on the starboard side there, you can see the hot water tank, uh, some storage boxes on the front here. So that's an area where you can put little fold up bikes, uh, say or further like an outboard motor if you didn't want to carry a dinghy on the back. Then we've got a diesel pad uh, cola generator sat down here just in front of the engines, which will run all the onboard systems. So and it all looks pretty good in there, very little corrosion on the engines. Looks like it's been well maintained. So we just head out onto the side decks here. Um, up top you'll notice we've got, say that, Simrad 3G radar, a couple of stainless trumpet horns and a white uh, goal post system there for the for the lights uh, white finish on the roof here stay starting to show its age a bit we could change this if it bothered you but I think most of that dirt will clean off and certainly the wrap here on the the mullions as we walk forwards doesn't look like it's suffered too badly with with shoes scuffing it and what have you over the years there's a bit of bird lime there to clear off but it's on the whole I would say pretty good uh, bow sunbathing cushions so this was a factory extra obviously with a winter storage cover right there so that's the same platinum finish as the cushions inside and then if we come up forward here there's a big storage locker forward here so that'll take sort of six fenders handy place to store them out of the way good sized lumar anchor winch So there we have it i say normally we'd wait until a boat's fully prepared for sale before doing a tour but i have to say given the popularity of these models and how busy the market is in general at the moment truly uh, if you want to get in on the act on one of these before before she's ready uh, now's the time say so we can we can sell the boat as it is or we can run it through a full program of of pre-season prep work i say so we would normally service the systems, polish the hull, anti-foul the bottom, change the anodes, run through all the systems and even potentially put a warranty on the boat at the end. Of course, part exchange is potentially possible as well. So if you've got something smaller that you wish to upgrade into the Sunseeker range, it's a great opportunity uh, and really rare. So there are, I would say, less than half a dozen of these left in the UK now. Um, and it's the one of only two for sale in the UK at the moment that I'm aware of. So great opportunity. Uh, she's going on the market at £349,000 tax paid. So it's UK tax paid, which given Brexit coming up at the end of the month, uh, is a great opportunity for those that want to stay here boating in the UK weather. 
and she's ashore here in the yard at Sunseeker Pool. So if you'd like to come down and see her before the Christmas break, um, please get in touch and I can send you some photos, talk through the specs on her um, and try and work out a deal, I say, to get you on the water early in the new year. Uh, my email is james at sunseekersouthampton.com or drop me a call to plus four four seven seven four seven six eight six five eight seven. I hope you enjoyed a brief tour today and we look forward to hearing from you soon.